A century back, basketball was a vastly different sport from what we see today. How did this transformation occur? The journey began with a teacher named James Naismith, who aimed to invent an engaging game for his students. And just like that, basketball was born. Initially, the sport was rudimentary at best, with soccer balls for play and wooden baskets for goals. Indeed, it was basketball in its most primitive form, lacking even the ability to dribble. However, the sport underwent rapid evolution, and by 1906, the introduction of metal rims and the legalization of dribbling marked significant advancements. The formation of the first professional basketball league, the NBL, soon followed. A dozen years on, the emergence of another league, the BAA, brought iconic teams such as the Celtics, the Lakers, the Knicks, and the Warriors into existence. By 1949, with basketball's popularity soaring, the BAA and NBL decided to merge, giving rise to the NBA we know today. Despite its status as the premier basketball league globally, the NBA of that era was such that most of its players maintained regular day jobs to make ends meet. Take, for example, Norman Glick, who wasn't just making plays on the court, but also working as a plumber. This is no jest. However, the landscape began to shift in 1956 with the entrance of one of basketball's all-time greats, Celtics legend Bill Russell. His talent was undeniable, clinching a championship in his debut season and amassing a total of 11 championships over his illustrious career. Indeed, the Celtics reigned supreme over the league for an uninterrupted span of 13 years. Then, in 1959, a formidable rival emerged on the scene, Wilt Chamberlain. Chamberlain was an athlete of mythic proportions, reputed to have the strength to bench press 500 pounds, the charisma to have any women he wanted, and the skill to score 100 points in a single game, a record that remains unbeaten. However, it's worth noting that none of these feats were captured on film, leading to ongoing discussions about the veracity of these claims. The following two decades marked a period of profound struggle for the NBA, teetering on the brink of collapse. The year 1967 saw the birth of a competing league, the ABA, which introduced teams such as the Spurs, Nuggets, Nets, and Pacers. This new league, along with the NBA, divided the basketball fan base with over 200 players across both leagues. Compounding the league's troubles was the alarming fact that 70% of NBA players were battling drug addiction, a significant issue at the time. By 1978, the NBA's popularity had plummeted to such depths that the majority of its finals games were not even broadcast on television, reflecting a stark disinterest from the public. However, just as the league faced potential financial ruin, salvation came in the form of two extraordinary talents, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. In 1978, these two athletes, arguably the greatest college basketball players of their time, ignited one of the most electrifying rivalries the sport had ever witnessed. Their on-court battles, filled with trash talk, physical play, and impressive scoring feats captivated the nation, drawing an unprecedented 40 million viewers to a single college game. Between 1978 and 1979, Bird and Magic made their transition to the NBA, with Bird joining the Boston Celtics and Magic Johnson signing with the Los Angeles Lakers. This move coincided with the NBA's absorption of the four remaining ABA teams, unifying the professional basketball landscape under the NBA banner. Additionally, 1979 marked a pivotal moment in the sport's history with the introduction of the three-point line, revolutionizing the game and its strategy. The NBA's resurgence was further bolstered by the league's decision to start selling player jerseys, a move that proved immensely popular. Under the leadership and rivalry of Bird and Magic, the NBA experienced a renaissance, emerging stronger and more popular than ever before. Unbeknownst to the NBA, a seismic shift was on the horizon. Heralded by a young talent from North Carolina, who was destined to redefine basketball and leave an indelible mark on the world. In 1982, this 19-year-old collegiate athlete was posting an average of 13 points and 4 rebounds per game. While these numbers might not seem extraordinary, they were crucial in propelling the North Carolina Tar Heels to the NCAA championship. It was in the climactic moments of that championship game that he etched his name into history. With his team trailing by a single point and the clock ticking down, he made a play that clinched the victory. Applause. The North Carolina Tar Heels were crowned the 1982 NCAA champions. Michael Jordan, the architect of this moment, was poised to dominate the world of basketball. By 1984, after being drafted by the Chicago Bulls, Jordan quickly ascended to stardom, securing the Rookie of the Year title and setting the stage for what appeared to be a game-changing career. However, an injury early in his second season, a shattered foot, temporarily derailed his trajectory. 
At the same time, another collegiate player was on the rise, poised to challenge Jordan's burgeoning legacy. This player was touted as potentially surpassing MJ, boasting greater size, strength, and rebounding prowess. In 1986, he was selected by the Boston Celtics, a team already rich in talent with legends like Larry Bird, Bill Walton, and Danny Ainge. But tragedy struck just two days later, marking one of the darkest moments in NBA history. Len Bias, a star from the University of Maryland on the verge of joining the Boston Celtics and potentially becoming a world champion, succumbed to a heart attack at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. The cause was heart failure triggered by cocaine use. Medical examiners noted the cocaine in Bias's system was nearly pure, a stark contrast to the typically 60% diluted cocaine found in Maryland. The drug was absorbed into his bloodstream within seconds, disrupting the electrical activity in his brain and leading to an irregular heartbeat. Len Bias's untimely death not only ended a promising career before it could truly begin, but also signaled the end of the Celtics' era of dominance. Yet, on the horizon was the emergence of a new era of dominance. A short while after his recovery from an injury, Michael Jordan ascended to unparalleled global fame. He led the Chicago Bulls to three consecutive NBA championships, launched the legendary Air Jordan sneakers, and achieved such a level of fame that his silhouette alone was instantly recognizable worldwide. The phrase, Be Like Mike, became a global rallying cry, drawing unprecedented international attention to basketball. By 1992, the NBA had expanded its reach, hosting games in nations such as China, Germany, and Russia. That year also marked a historic moment when basketball legends including Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan united on the USA Olympic team, forming the so-called Dream Team, which is widely regarded as the most formidable sports team ever put together. At this juncture, basketball and the NBA were experiencing their zenith, leading to the league's expansion into Canada with the addition of two teams. However, this golden era faced a sudden and tragic interruption. The news broke of Michael Jordan's father, James Jordan, being found dead under circumstances that pointed to murder. This event deeply affected Jordan, leading him to step away from basketball and retire from the NBA in 1993, creating a void in the league that seemed impossible to fill. The Houston Rockets stepped up in the following seasons, securing back-to-back -back championships, yet the absence of Jordan's presence on the court was palpable. In an unexpected turn of events, just two years into his retirement, Michael Jordan announced his return to the NBA with two words that electrified the basketball world. I'm back. This comeback not only rejuvenated the league, but also set the stage for Jordan's first encounter with a rising star who would come to be known as the Black Mamba. Ed, that narrative was just a glimpse into one of the eight segments we have lined up. But first, let's hear from our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. Imagine being so skilled in basketball that you become the primary focus of every defense. Picture this, I'm on fire, scoring my 69th point of the match, and suddenly, the player defending me loses his cool, hits me from the side, and my ankle snaps. There I was, unsure of my next steps, especially with the medical expenses looming over me for a broken ankle I couldn't afford to treat. However, my relentless search led me to a lifesaver, a law firm specializing in injury cases that offers their services without charge unless they secure a win for you. Indeed, Morgan & Morgan commits to fighting tooth and nail to ensure you receive the best possible outcome. Should you ever find yourself injured, consider visiting ForThePeople.com to request a complimentary case evaluation. Believe me when I say this is a decision you're bound to be thankful for. Now we must pivot back to Michael Jordan, for with his declaration of I'm back, he heralded his return to the NBA. Alongside the Bulls, he once again ascended to the pinnacle of the league, securing three consecutive championships, one of which was poignantly won on Father's Day, a victory he dedicated to his late father in a moment of profound beauty. However, as Jordan's illustrious career neared its conclusion, the stage was set for the emergence of a new generation of stars, including Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, and Allen Iverson. Each introduced revolutionary changes to the game. Iverson altered the art of dribbling and movement. Kobe instilled his relentless Mamba mentality, and Shaq's unparalleled size was unmatched. Yet the transformation extended beyond the hardwood. The early 2000s witnessed a cultural shift within the league, with players embracing tattoos, chains, and jewelry, signaling a complete aesthetic transformation of the NBA. By 2003, Shaq and Kobe had cemented their dominance, leading the Lakers to a trio of consecutive championships, a spectacle of basketball excellence. However, this partnership was to unravel. Kobe perceived Shaq as lacking in diligence, while Shaq found Kobe's demeanor abrasive, leading to a fractious end to their collaboration. Amidst this, a narrative of even greater magnitude was unfolding. A high school phenom 
possessing a blend of Magic Johnson's vision, Michael Jordan's prowess, and an almost mythical talent, was capturing the nation's attention. LeBron James, arguably the most anticipated basketball talent to emerge, could have joined the NBA straight out of high school had the rules permitted. Such was his prodigious talent. In the 2003 NBA draft, he was chosen by his hometown team, the Cleveland Cavaliers, poised to ascend to the throne of the NBA. While the basketball world was captivated by LeBron James, a shadowy narrative unfolded behind the scenes. Referee Tim Donahue was caught manipulating game outcomes for the Mafia, advising them on which teams to bet on. This manipulation wasn't limited to an isolated incident or a single series. It spanned across four years, with Donahue at the helm, altering the course of NBA history with every game he officiated. The scheme was so extensive that it eventually drew the attention of the FBI, leading to a comprehensive two-year investigation that culminated in Donahue serving an 11-month prison sentence. Despite these dark moments, the 2000s also witnessed the dawn of the Super Team era, exemplified by the Boston Celtics trio of NBA legends, Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce. While the NBA had seen dominant teams in the past, like the 82 Sixers and the 96 Bulls, it was the first era where teams strategically assembled trios of superstars with the explicit aim of championship glory. The Miami Heat's formation of Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, and LeBron James in 2010 set a new standard for super teams, reaching the finals in their debut season together. However, 2011 saw the NBA confront one of its most challenging periods, with a lockout initiated over disputes between team owners wanting to reduce player salaries and players refusing to accept these cuts. This deadlock led to a shutdown, leaving stars like LeBron James and Kevin Durant to showcase their skills in local gymnasiums, while others like J.R. Smith sought opportunities abroad, and some players even sought regular employment outside basketball. The uncertainty loomed large over the NBA's future, until, after 161 days, a new collective bargaining agreement was reached. This agreement ushered in an era of staggering contracts, such as Timothy Modzgov's $65 million deal for averaging six points per game, and Kevin Durant's contracts surpassing $160 million, starkly contrasting with Bill Russell's peak salary of $100,000 annually, equivalent to about $975,000 today. Once the NBA resumed, LeBron James thrived in Miami, reaching the finals four consecutive times and securing two championships. This period marked the rise of a potential new greatest of all time, GOAT, as the league entered what many called the LeBron era. In 2014, LeBron made his way back to Cleveland, determined to deliver a championship to his hometown, anticipating a series of victories. However, a revolution was brewing on the West Coast, led by a player named Steph Curry from the Bay Area's Golden State Warriors, who was set to redefine the NBA landscape. Curry's ability to shoot from virtually any spot on the court was unprecedented. The NBA had never witnessed such a sharpshooter, transforming three-pointers from a standard tactic into a dominant strategy. Curry's record-breaking three-point shooting, MVP accolade, and leading the Warriors to the 2015 NBA Finals victory reshaped the league's approach to offense. Teams scrambled to replicate the Warriors' success, launching three-pointers at an unprecedented rate in search of their own version of Steph Curry. Yet, Curry's unique talent proved inimitable. Between 2015 and 2018, the NBA witnessed a riveting showdown between LeBron, the reigning king, and Curry, the unparalleled marksman, culminating in unforgettable playoff battles. Notably, in 2016, LeBron and the Cavaliers overcame a three, one deficit against the Warriors in the finals, securing a victory that stands as one of LeBron's crowning achievements. At the same time, the NBA saw an influx of international talent, with players like Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Nikola Jokic dominating the league and securing the last five MVP awards from 2019 to 2023. The top echelons of the league were no longer exclusively American, a development unprecedented in NBA history. However, an unforeseen global crisis was on the horizon. A virulent disease began its rapid spread in China, raising alarm among U.S. health officials about the potential for its arrival stateside. As the deadly coronavirus made its official entry into the U.S., concerns escalated. Players, including LeBron James, expressed reluctance to play under the looming threat, leading to the NBA's decision to suspend the season. This suspension resulted in a complete halt of league activities for four months. In response, the NBA devised an innovative, albeit initially perceived as radical strategy to resume the season. They proposed creating a bubble at Disney World, where teams would gather to play out the remainder of the season in isolation, without the possibility of leaving, inviting outsiders, or even ordering food from external sources. Despite the challenges, 
This plan allowed the season to continue, culminating in LeBron James securing his fourth championship ring, all while ensuring the health and safety of everyone involved as no one fell ill. By the time 2021 rolled around, COVID-19 persisted, yet fans made their return to the stands, marking one of the most unusual seasons in NBA history. The Nets were ousted from the playoffs due to Kevin Durant's oversized foot, LeBron James faced his first-ever first-round elimination, and the Milwaukee Bucks clinched their first championship since 1971. The following season, 2022-23, showcased a memorable finals showdown between the Celtics and the Warriors, with Steph Curry securing his fourth championship ring. However, it's crucial to address a looming issue that seems to be flying under the radar. The league's star players are aging, signaling a potential close to a significant chapter in NBA history. The average retirement age for an NBA player hovers around 35 years. Currently, Jimmy Butler, James Harden, Derrick Rose, and Russell Westbrook are all 34, while Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant are 35, Chris Paul is 38, and LeBron James, also 38, stands as the oldest active player in the league. This situation suggests that retirement is on the horizon for these athletes, promising a dramatic transformation in the league's landscape. Presently, the NBA comprises 30 teams, but there are plans to expand to 32 teams. Given the extensive changes the league has already undergone, the future could hold anything from the introduction of a four-point line and airless basketballs to the potential participation of robots developed by Toyota in the game. Indeed, we are witnessing the conclusion of one era and the dawn of another.